Hi, YouTube friends. Well, I'm back with um, spinning fiber cards, all that kind of stuff. This is a wool video. And I promised you that I would show you um, what I've started doing with my Paradise Fibers um, hand carters. And I did start working on that with the little video that I'll post up there. A um, little short video, like 11 minutes, this lady showing how to use hand carters. It was very helpful. And so I got out, I should remind you, I've got this bag. Sorry, this is going to be a little disorganized. I've got this bag of wool, kind of a creamy colored wool that a dear friend gave me, who is so encouraging to my spinning. I, I need somebody to shove me to spin. And it's a whole bag of this, and it has been cleaned. It's not really still in locks, though. It's just in a cloud. Um, so you can't really see where the locks were or anything like that, which doesn't matter to me. It was really easy to spin with. Um, I, I won't show you. I'll show you a little bit. I did some spinning with it. I don't know if I recorded that or not. Anyway, this is just a little handful. But it's a really strong, a fairly thin, this is bumpy. I'm not a very good spinner. But it's very strong um, yarn, even just a single ply. Well, anyway, so I started making some little Rolags with this lady, and they look like this. They look like a little hot dog cloud. <laughs> a very long hot dog, foot long hot dog. And um, the first one I did, I think, was the best. I don't think that was the first one. Maybe that was the first one. I don't know. You're supposed to be able to look at it afterward and not see any dense spots or... Um, spots where the fibers are not, they should be all evenly separated, okay? And that was a lot of fun. A little frustrating sometimes, but um, I can't blame her. Uh, it's just because I'm a newbie. But the thing that was different in my wool from what she was doing is she was starting with locks. She had real locks. You could see the tips and you could see the structure of the lock and she would lay the lock down. And I think that I would have perhaps better success, a little closer to what she makes if I had locks instead of the um, the fiber that I have has been clean and is just kind of in a cloud. So, um, and locks, by definition, would already have their fibers going more all in the same direction, whereas this uh, wool that's in a cloud, is it's all been kind of jumbled up. So, today I was going to take my nice little basket of Rolags, and I was gonna start spinning with them. So I had to remind myself where I was with my spinning wheel. Well, I had this bobbin on there of this, okay? A big old bobbin full of, of this, full of this yarn. And I had stopped spinning on it probably two months ago, <laughs> at least, it might be more. Um, and I'd forgotten why, but the reason I stopped spinning was that I was spinning this stuff away and spinning away. And then at some point, either the, um, the yarn I was feeding in broke or it ran out, something happened and the end flew into the bobbin and I looked and I couldn't find the end. Okay. I was like, well, that's weird. It should be just laying right there on top when you're spinning, you know, uh, but I couldn't find it. And I was like, you know, I'm tired. I've been spinning a while. I'll do this later. <laughs> That was two months ago. So finally today, I was like, it's time to go do something with this. I just wanted to keep on um, spinning onto this bobbin. And this bobbin now looks like this. Is that not scary? That is so scary. I've never had this situation before. I took that bobbin off. I started hunting for the end. I could not find it. I could not find it. And I started gently feeling, rolling, rolling, you know, strands off, and oh my goodness, as soon as you start doing that, you're going to have the tangle of all tangles on a bobbin, and this is not a bobbin you can unscrew and just slide it off, okay, you have to unwind it, or you have to get a pair of scissors and just cut it off, which I kind of didn't want to do, because I'm not that kind of girl, I don't want to give in, <laughs> so um, I did, at one point, the strand broke. Well, then I had two ends, but they weren't the right ends. But I finally thought I might have found an end that would work. Doesn't that sound terrible? So I decided, okay, I'm going to try to get this off of here. Well, then I realized that I had, I only have three bobbins on my spinning wheel. And the other two bobbins were already occupied. <laughs> So even if I could have unrolled the yarn off of here, which obviously I cannot, oh my goodness, 
Um, I could I didn't have a bobbin to put it on to, and I even tried a bobbin from my antique wheel that's um, hard to work with, and of course it didn't fit either. So I had two bobbins uh, full of this single ply, which was waiting to be plied. I don't know what I was waiting on, what I was thinking of. I had this is probably a year old. I don't know how old it is. Um, you really, sh if you only have three bobbins, you shouldn't keep them. You shouldn't keep your yarn, your single ply, on there that long. Anyway, the other one wasn't as full as this. So finally, I decided I would just tie on my end that I had discovered from here. And so I started trying to transfer this white onto this yellow. And I'll, I'll take you over there and show you what that looks like. Now, this is what this bobbin looks like. Now, you can see the purple that was underneath. And I started somewhere in here and I went, I spun it up to here and I came back down to here. However, at this point, the end on this yarn is not, it's not coming off anymore. It's buried deep in there. I can't figure it out. I've gotten some off. I just don't know what to do. I'll probably end up trashing some of this. I don't want to fight with it for a whole afternoon. At some point, you have to um, weigh the balance between the value of your time and the value of the yarn you're tossing in the trash can. <laughs> um, plus, I really want to start spinning this, okay? And I'm, I really need to get this stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, ply this with that white. I'm just going to ply it all away <laughs> and try to forget about it. Um, this was really lovely lovely single ply. Um, so I try to get that off there and then I'll have three bobbins to work with and I will start spinning my row legs and doing more carding and producing more row legs and that will be um, in this video as well. Okay and the next thing I want to do I should hang on real quick because I'm going to a friend's house for lunch. But I just have to remind you of all the double ply yarn I have. I have this. I have this. And then I have a whole bunch of old that I did on my, oh, this, this is the alpaca. That is so soft. And I have more of that, more of that, more of that. More of that. Some of this I actually tried to knit with at one point, and there's a little bit more, um, and then took it back out because it looked horrific. That was, when I try to invent my own patterns, it's a disaster. So, what I think I've decided I want to do with this yarn that I'm spinning is I want to weave with it. I want to use it as the weft yarn. I'm going to use probably um, something like this. This is really strong. Um, crochet thread. that You can get this at a thrift store. People buy this and they don't know what to do with it, so then they donate it. <laughs> and then you get all kinds of free crochet yarn. But this would make, a, especially even if I doubled it, this would make a really nice um, warp yarn and it's not heavy. It doesn't dominate. And so these beautiful um, hand spun yarns in the weft would really dominate the weave. And um, I think that's what I want to do with that. And maybe do some big things where I'll really use up lots of yarn and transfer from one color to the other and just blend them all in there together and um, maybe make a blanket or something. I don't know. I do have alpaca and I have wool, so I need to figure out if those will go together. Okay, I have to dash, but I'll get back to you about these Rolex. It's now Wednesday. It's a little after lunch and I'm finally getting back to my fleece. What I have here are some locks. These are alpaca locks, so it's not sheep's wool. And I don't think it's been washed. I think it's been, no, I think she washed it and didn't pick it all the way or she picked it and didn't wash it. I don't know. Um, alpaca doesn't have to be washed as much as sheep's wool because alpaca doesn't have any lanolin in it, um, which is <coughs> an oil. The big difference between the video that I'll link um, and I've been watching for carding with my carders big difference between her fiber and my fiber is that she had locks and I didn't. And so mine, as I showed you, I think before, <clears throat> my roll legs came out looking very nice, but, um, but not quite like hers. And so I thought I would try just to see how it works. And if mine turn out differently, I thought I would try some locks. Now locks 
are very interesting. This is like straight off the sheet. You can see the crinkliness in it. And there'll be some little, there'll be pointy ends. These are the tips. And they'll usually have a little color. And it's not actually dirt. Um, it's actually the color of the, um, well, that looks a little dirty. But I don't know. A lot of times it's just the color of the, the wool. And then the other end will be cut blunt. And so you can really tell the tip. <clears throat> um, yeah, and you can see here on this lock how the end that was closest to the sheep's body, it looks a little wider, and then you have kind of a dirty area, and then you have a cleaner area, and then you have the tip. That seems kind of normal. So if you look at this cluster of fiber I have, you can see these tips sticking out. And so a good way to do this <clears throat> is just to pull those tips. And if you see any other tips sticking around, try to pull those up with the others, because they probably all go together. Well, this stuff is kind of dirtier than I thought. It has VM, or vegetable matter, mixed in. <clears throat> and um, some of that will come out as my card. Now, I don't need a lot of this for this little test. I'm going to do a test to see how much different it is with locks. And then I'm going to do a little test. Oh, All right. <clears throat> now, I've got this set up so that you're a little bit over my shoulder. That's my only complaint against the video I was watching is that the camera was facing her. And so I kept on having to try to do a mirror image or turn around and figure out how, um, how I, um, which hand I was supposed to use or whatever. I'm not sure that it matters a lot. Okay. She said to make sure... Put the tips over the edge of your base carter, your stationary carter. I apologize if I didn't get the terminology right. And to um, place these locks with their butt end up here, about three quarters of an inch from the top of these tines. And you kind of, you want to pull them out and down so they kind of lock in place. And I've got one right there that doesn't seem to be... There we go. <clears throat> so lock in place. Okay. Boy, they just they stick to everything. <laughs> That's how it works, though. That's why they're so nice and warm. Okay, and you put those there. I'm going to hold it with my thumb. These tines are not so sharp that you're going to, like, cut yourself on them or anything like that. <clears throat> When I had, when I, my other carding I was doing without locks, um, they were just wads and I would just kind of generally slap a bunch of them on there hoping they were going in a direction, but um, these are much more structured. She talks a lot about maintaining the structure of your lock and that just means that the, all the fibers are together, going the same direction. And that, that you don't turn them into a wad of stuff. And she did say that most of the VM you're going to find at the tip of the locks. Although I'm seeing a good bit of it. And this may, seriously, this may be just a filthy, dirty endeavor if these locks end up being truly dirty, dirty. My brother has sheep and I sometimes wished I could get some of his sheep's wool. He used to have a beautiful, a ram that was very small, but he was beautiful, dark brown. I don't remember his name. He was a handsome beast. Okay. A few extra little pieces here. Okay, now, remember, I am a beginner. <laughs> okay, I'm probably going to make a hashes, and I haven't done it in several days. Okay, so she said, now she said to do this in your lap, but I'm going to do it here where you can see it. You kind of, And she crossed her leg or raised one of her legs so that her, her thigh was up and she could rest her stationary carter. Actually, I'm supposed to hold it, I think, like this. Um, hold her stationary carter like this. Um, and really brace it on something. Um, we'll see how it works here. 
So you're supposed to just barely catch. And this is why you want these locks to be attached up here. So you really have to pull them. You're not trying to jump them off of the card. You're trying to pull them through the tines. And you want to pull until all of the fibers that you have gotten are free. And you want them to come back around like this. What I'm probably going to end up with is a lot of VM on this table. Oh, that looks lovely. You're kind of, I'm sorry if I bumped the camera stand. They're looking so pretty. And notice how I haven't even gotten up to um, where my, my, two, my tines from my working carter are touching the tines from the other. Now I've really gotten some. Now the goal is not to transfer the fiber from this card all to this card. That was a mistake I was doing. You're about splitting it half and half. Okay, so um, and you can start gently brushing. That's what she said. If you get your tines embedded between your two cards, that's not good. If you, so you really should just be gently raking them over the top. I like this better with locks. Now I do have a lot of VM down there. I'm not going to touch that. Okay, so I really haven't... I haven't really taken half. Oh dear, now can I remember? Okay, now, <clears throat> when you're looking at your two cards, here's your working one, here's your stationary one. The one where the locks were the most embedded is your bottom one, it's your stationary one. And so that is the card that you need to get all of the fiber off of on this next move. And so the thing you do is you take both cards and turn them so that the tines are facing you. Now, I don't have an even distribution. I still have more on the original one, but looking at her video, that's okay. All right, and at this point, these fibers here on the front here are nice and fluffy, but the ones back here are still, they haven't changed any. They're just like when I put them in. So I want to fluff them. So I need to put these fibers into the tines and loosen these ones up. So this is what she does. She keeps this one down and put this one here. And you're trying to get those nice fluffy fibers onto, you're trying to get them kind of attached. Okay, you want them to attach. And so you make a V, see that V? And then you slowly do this and it pulls it all off. Okay, look at that. Keep this as your stationary carter still, and to use this as your working carter. So I'm going to do what she says, okay? And she says just to pull gently. I think it takes a lot of practice not to enmesh your tines to really get a feel of exactly where, how close the cards can get to each other without getting the tines too close. Now the goal here is, as I said before, not to get all the fibers going the same way, although that'll happen. It's to separate the fibers from one another. And this is the hard part because you really, your last pass, you want your cards to be overlapping about that much. And you need to be able to come all the way down, but not unless your times. And see, I'm not very good at that yet. Now let's look at what we've got. They are looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. She does make the point, too, that um, if you have flat carters, which is what I have, that when you brush the carters, when you make a pass like this, they need to be absolutely parallel to each other. None of this um, curving or bending at the end. Okay? Uh, so this is my last pass. This is my second pass. Excuse me. And at this point, she says, 
can turn this over. You go up here. No. You go up here. She says make a T and then make your V. And it's just amazing how easily that comes off fully. Okay. I'm not really sure how um, she makes her distinctions between working carter and stationary carter. Um, at this point, I know that the fibers, you're not keeping your locks all going the same direction as far as I can tell. Um, I've seen these alpaca locks are quite long. I think they're longer than wool. Well, this is my third pass, and she said most fiber three passes is perfectly adequate, and I think that may be true of these. They look really good. I think the VM, just the carding has taken the VM out um, that was left. Okay. Now, in order to start your roll lag, Now that looks nice. Looks pretty clean. I think I see one little something in there, but otherwise they look pretty clean, evenly distributed. Now, <clears throat> in order to um, to start your roll lag, you're going to pass your fiber. You're going to get your fiber off of both cards, and so you're going to do this first one. I'm not very good at this yet, so I'm going to really help it to come off straight. Okay. I've got more VM. See, I've got some VM there, 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 but they're pretty big chunks. And this is a spinning experiment. Like, I'm not going to be, I'm certainly not going to be making anything I'm going to try to sell. So if I have a little VM in my fiber that's, that also transfers over into my spinning and then into anything I make, I'm not going to worry about that. Now, again, with both cards facing me, I'm going to go up here, make a T. And roll that off. And now that cloud of fiber is just sitting on that car. Okay, after looking at her video, I realized my fiber really is longer. Hers fits onto her card and mine sticks out, but I think that'll be okay. Um, this last maneuver that you do, you have the stationary carter flat and you can put it on your knee and your lap or on a table like this. You're going to need both hands. And then uh, this carter that's going to help you um, needs to have uh, the tines down. Okay. And you're just going to roll, making a little hot dog. And you don't want to use the tines. You just want to use the wood to try to help roll this in. This is, this is a lot fluffier than what I was doing before. Maybe that's just because it's alpaca. But you are trying to keep these fibers going in a roll. You don't want to just bunch them up. Okay. And then when you get to the end over here, all the way to the end, rolling them off, then you're going to pick this up and move it back over. And she says, do one last really assertive roll here where you push this all the way across. And this is this is the kind of thing I'm not very good at yet. This is it's supposed to look it's supposed to look like a roll log. The first one I did was my best. And I still leave a lot here. I don't know if I'm not assertive enough or what. But um or if I haven't done my fibers enough so that they're all rolling in the same direction. So there is this roll lag. You can kind of see the layers inside. Now, when I compare that to one of these, these are thinner. I can see inside of this roll leg, I can see uh, almost like the inside of a hurricane. You can see that spin. I can see the layers of fibers go in the same direction. In here, I can't see it as much. So it'll be interesting to see. I want to compare how these spin. Okay, so that's the next thing we're going to do. Well, I thought I was recording, and I went to stop my recording and found out that I wasn't recording. <laughs> so, 
we'll get on with it now. I did the first row lag of the sheep's wool. And if you can look at this, you can see that it's just inconsistent. There's some bumpy spots, and that's because there's bumpiness inside of these row lags. If you hold it up to the light, you can see thicker spots and thinner spots in the, um, in the row lag. And that transfers into the yarn as you spin it. But I'm going to keep on going because this is pretty fun. And um, this is about as good, I think, as this yarn, th this sheep's wool can get. So we'll keep on going on this. I don't know if I said this before. I like to spin to the left. And I like to ply to the right. And I was waxing eloquent while the camera was not recording about how much I love chain plying. And I'll put a little link to my previous video when I was chain plying. I did that again this week when I was cleaning off all my bobbins. I had some leftover on one bobbin, which always happens when you try to do a two ply. They never come out balanced. This, see this, I love this. Um, the sheep's wool, you can just pull on that and it's not gonna, it's gonna let go of itself well enough to draft, but it's not going to break on you. It's going to stick. I think I can still feel a little little bit of lamblin in there. It's just hard to tell. It doesn't feel nasty. It doesn't smell bad. Anyway, I was doing some chain pine. See, so there's a thick spot. You have to really... It's hard to get that out of there. There's another one there. I mean, if you really want to work hard, you can pull out it. I don't think that carding is intended to get rid of that. I think that that's, I personally think that's a result of the washing and a little bit of felting has occurred, just the beginning of felting, and so you get these thick spots that felting would bring. And that's the reason that um, if you can get locks that are washed, have been very carefully washed so that the locks maintain their structure, I mean, that's hard to do. Um, then that's the very best thing to card and spin with. There's a teeny little bit of VM still left in here. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't anticipate using this for anything fancy. Picking out every teeny, there's actually not much at all. I think that might have been the only thing I've seen this time. Anyway, I've nearly determined that chain plying is the only kind of plying I'm going to do. I'm so tired of plying two bobbins together and finding out I have a big old bunch of yarn left on one bobbin because they weren't it didn't have exactly the same amount and okay hang on I'm gonna get that out of there that's a real a little wad I throw everything on the floor and then I vacuum later <laughs> that's easier than getting the trash here let me uh let me go down on this a little bit this is fairly thin I guess I think of myself as spinning very thin but it's not filling up the bobbin very fast I love projects that give quick results. See, now there's a piece of VM, and yep, it just popped out onto my lap. So you don't always have to pick the VM out. But I love quick results when I do, um, especially any kind of craft project. That's why I paint watercolor cards. They're very small, and you get such an immediate result. But chain plying gives such a sense of satisfaction. Um, maybe when I get done here, I'll show you what I got off of my, oh, what I got off of my bobbins yesterday was both fun and rather disappointing. Um, it comes from not spinning often enough. It is amazing how far one of these roll lags will go. And this sheep's wool has such good grab to it, for lack of a better word, I'm sure there's a technical term about how each fiber grabs onto its neighbor fibers. <laughs> But um, you can, if you have yarn uh, fiber that does grab on really well, hang on, there's a piece of the end that will not fall out, then um, you can spin really thin because you don't have to worry about it breaking. Oh, wrong way. I need to spin more. Part of my issue is that um, spinning, sitting in a chair and spitting, spitting, spinning, spinning, um, 
makes my back ache just a little bit. I can't say it hurts. It just gets uncomfortable and I want to get up and do something else. Because you do pretty much stay in one position, it also can hurt your neck because you're looking down at your lap and your hands in the same position. I try to tilt my neck. So that I can give it a good stretch. See how far this has gone? So although I've been a little whiny about the th little thick spots, little wads of fiber in this um, sheep's wool, it's not bad. The, the dear friend and mentor who gave me this, which has been already washed, has a whole garbage bag full of sheep's wool that hasn't been washed yet and will need to be washed. Um, and I've told her I'll go ahead and take that. Okay, I'll get these other two roll eggs done of sheep's wool, and then I'll move on to um, the alpaca and let you know if I find really any difference. Now here is the little dab of bobbin that I just did. This is four roll eggs did that much. That's not really a lot of single ply. Um, and of course it's getting a little fluffy on the end. But it's not a bad yarn. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. I want to spin enough of the sheep's wool to fill up this bobbin and then I'm going to triple ply it and that will do that another time. But let me get um, a new bobbin and we will try spinning the alpaca onto it. And for any of those of you who um, haven't seen this particular spinning wheel before, this is a, a fairly new Kromsky that I bought new, um, unfinished, and it has a magnetic attachment here between this the flyer and the whirl. And the whirl has the band on it, the dry band. And this has a scotch tension, which is this little brown string back here. And so you put your bobbin on and you make sure that the string goes over the end of the bobbin. And of course, now that's, that's pretty loose, but you can use this little knob here to um, tighten your tension. And over time, you kind of get to where you know what feels right. And then you take the flyer just pop it on there and turn it a little bit and it automatically attaches and so it's so easy to take your flyer off and put your flyer on. It's just amazing. I love that. Um, I love, I, I really prefer the castle style wheel which is where um, you don't have the wheel on one end and um, the flyer and stuff on the other but um, you have it all centered in front of you and to me this just works better with my brain. What can I say? Um, I can tell that's a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to um, get this leader off. Starting with the locks, I can already tell, I'm just not getting those, I'm, I've got, got VM in here, but that's my own fault, I, did, I decided not to pick it anymore. But the yarn itself doesn't have those thick wads, those little spots, wads of fiber. That is fascinating. So this allows me to get just this beautiful, if it weren't for the VM. more consistent. Thickness. Interesting. They both come out of the roll lag, I think, pretty well. So the roll lag, the, the carding and the doing the roll lag um, is useful. It does, it does come out of here rather naturally. You can feel that there's this column of 
thin column of um, fiber that's all kind of already connected inside of the kind of the tube of the roll rag, and it seems to very easily, once you finish one little thin column, then um, it easily moves on to the next one. I really may try to work my way through the rest of the locks in that bag. Maybe I should show you how big showed you how big the bag of alpaca fleece is. I do want to keep my alpaca um, spinning and my sheep spinning separately, um, separate so that I know which one is which when I go to make something I can compare how they do. trying to hold my hands closer to the orifice here so hopefully you can see a bit of the drawing I'm doing not that you necessarily need to but I zoomed the camera in close to the to the flyer assembly so you can see the magnetic flyer and then I like this um, I like the carters I think they do a good job they give you a very manageable amount of fiber to work with in a roll rag that's one thing that um, when I had those long bowls of roving um, it was really fun to look at but that was a lot of roving you can't really you can't really balance it in your lap it's too big or not I need to um, yes treadle faster to put more spin into my my single ply. See how that's still kind of fluffy? It hasn't, it's not as tight as it should be. The, when you treadle more slowly, you're not spinning slowly, you're just making single ply that doesn't have enough twist in it. If you want your yarn to feed onto your bobbin faster, you have to increase your tension. I'm pretty pleased with my tension right now. I do think I need more twist. More twist. say that for some reason it seems like the VM drops out of the sheep's wool into my lap better than it does from the alpaca. It tends to stay in the alpaca, but who knows why that could be. I've forgotten how much I enjoy this. And what I really like, you can't see this, but I'm facing my window, one of my two windows in my studio. This one looks out back, which faces north. Looks back toward our farm instead of toward the road, which is lovely. But the first thing I really see is my fig tree. And boy, my fig tree is loaded with figs this year. And I already took a bunch of figs to my mother in West Virginia and made fig preserves for her. And so now, all the figs that are going to come on this summer are for me. And so I am going to make fig preserves, unless, except for the ones my husband wants to eat straight. He likes to eat them right off. So here's the end of the alpaca. I can't say that I can tell a huge difference except for that one, the alpaca was from Lox and um, the sheep's wool wasn't really in Lox anymore. And I do think that made a difference in the way that the, that the single ply looks. between cleaning and not cleaning I do believe here's the sheep's wool see how much wider it is and this one's a bit grayer that's just because it's dirty okay I promised to show you 
Oh dear, what I got off of my bobbins yesterday. Now, the yarn that was, on, the single ply that was on two of them was more this color, and this is that Shep's Wool uh, roving that I bought online that was so nice, and it had been sitting on the bobbin for, I don't know, six months or more. And you can see what these are is applying together of that yarn, this, this single ply with some of the single ply of this sheep's wool, okay? And so this is what I got, and it was just a most horrible plying. I don't know if these two things just didn't like each other, so I'm not sure what I'll do with that. It just looks awful, but I, I, I cannot tell you how much I messed with this. Um, just trying to get it off of my bobbin so that I could do what I did today. So I don't want to mess with it anymore. I, but um, it is kind of cool looking. I guess you could call it art yarn. But um, I think I might weave with it because in the weaving process it would be compressed and the strands would stay together. We will see. We will see. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. I think next time probably I'll catch you up on uh, what's happening at the Little House Project or as a friend of mine calls it, the Dependency. Adam has made a lot of wonderful progress there. See you next time.